One year out from the 2024 election, and Joe Biden is losing stunning new polls and must-win swing states, painting a catastrophic picture for the president. Donald Trump leading President Biden in five states, crucial to winning the White House. Biden only clings to a narrow advantage in Wisconsin. But that's not all the damage. Biden is bleeding critical support from all aspects of his coalition. Quote, voters under 30 favor Mr. Biden by only a single percentage point. His lead among Hispanic voters is down to single digits. And while women still favored Mr. Biden, men preferred Mr. Trump by twice as large a margin. Team Biden is just brushing it all off, saying there's no cause for concern and pointing out how Barack Obama was also losing at this point in his re-election campaign. But speaking of the former president, his top strategist, David Axelrod, is suggesting that Biden should drop out. The issue is not, uh, for him, is, is not uh, political, it's actuarial. And you can see that in this poll. I mean, there's just a lot of concern about the age issue. And uh, and that is something that I think he needs to uh, ponder. Just do a check and say, is this the right thing uh, to do? Time is fleeting here, and this is probably the last moment uh, for him to do that check. And it's, it's, it's probably good if he does. Axelrod is not alone. The media is also seriously worried about Biden's reelection prospects. These polls are alarming now, yes, but still should serve as the wake-up call that the Biden campaign and the country needs to understand what the stakes are. This is a wake-up call. This is frightening for not just the Biden White House, not just for Democrats, but for anybody who fears what a return to a Trump presidency would mean. In all candor, yeah. truth serum, yeah. this has to be like a political five-alarm fire in the White House. Harold Ford Jr., it's great to have you back around the table. And um, <laughs> about two months ago, the Washington Post had a poll that had Trump over Biden 10 points. And even if you remember, the Washington Post even put in the rep its own reporting that this is probably an outlier. Everyone should just not freak out. But it turns out several polls since have all shown the same thing. And now the New York Times saying that. Do you think Axelrod is speaking for many Democrats? He's, like, willing to say out loud what many Democrats are thinking. So good to be back. I put it in two camps. First, there is a belief in the Democrat Party, uh, and, and, and the biggest thing that unites Democrats is that they don't want uh, Donald Trump as president again. So you now have polling, consistent polling, showing Joe Biden not being able to defeat him uh, in key states. The national polling is relevant, but when you get that kind of polling and you see five or six states, Arizona, you got to think the border has something to do with it there. The other states, the thing that I found most interesting is the 22% the African-American support, the fact that Trump was leading in more diverse, the more diverse the state was, the more former President Trump was winning. The second thing that alarms me as a part of this is that the President uh, Biden has named his economic message, an economic plan going forward, Bidenomics. And there's one constant in American politics, presidential politics, the economy is always the issue. Even if national security and other cultural issues are part of it, it all comes back to the economy. The border can come back to the economy. It's national security and obviously what we're dealing with in Israel and Ukraine. Uh, as I listened to uh, David uh, Axelrod, uh, I heard the same thing. I, I wonder if he's suggesting that the president's age and maybe a lack of comfort with Vice President Harris as a, as a backup to the president, are those issues that Democrats are are, are heavy on Democrats' minds. I think if you're one of the big state governors thinking about running, and obviously there's somebody in the race in the primary side, but Democrats, you got to think about how do, you, how do you stir support in South Carolina? How do you stir support perhaps in Iowa? New Hampshire is a little bit of an outlier because of the, the challenges and the consternation between the campaign, the Biden campaign, and them and, and, and Biden choosing to put South Carolina in front. I saw a poll that showed even black voters in South Carolina have some, some reservation about President Biden. So this is, this indeed is a wake-up call. I would encourage Democrats to distinguish between when President Obama was down in 2012 on two fronts. One, uh, we were not in two wars uh, then, and President Biden ran on having this kind of experience. And two, uh, the person that was the front runner on the other side, and that time it likely was Mitt Romney. I don't know if it was Mitt, Mitt Romney, Romney, but he went on to be the nah, but He probably wasn't a front runner at the time. He didn't have some of the baggage that President Trump, and this is not an indictment on President Trump per se, but he's facing a lot of counts, a lot of legal counts, a lot of legal issues. 
So this is this is not just a five alarm for I think the, the White House, they've got to think about pushing a reset button here because what what's happening and what they're doing uh, is not resonating with part of their base and the most important part of the Democratic base for black voters. One of the things that the Biden team last week said, Jesse, is that the fundamentals of the race are strong, which is a tell that they have a problem. The second thing is, what did President Biden do today? In the wake of this, he gave a speech in front of Amtrak and gave the, and talking about $25 billion for Amtrak, which does not address anything that people are concerned about. Well, like Harold, it's also very good to be back around the table. Great to have you. <laughs> I love how the media needs their own poll for a wake-up call. <laughs> like a Big Mac's $18, and they need to run a poll to know that Joe's going to get shellacked. I was all in on the red wave, so I might need to temper what I'm going to say about this. But, Dana, when I see a poll this good, mm -hmm. I have a hard time staying away from it. And this poll is good. <laughs> this is landslide city. This is 300 electoral votes for Trump. This is Trump might win the popular vote if he sweeps all these battleground states. And you know what that means, Dana, if you get a win like that? It doesn't necessarily just mean it's a rejection of Bidenomics. It's an endorsement of MAGA. If you have a country coming out and voting this overwhelmingly for Donald Trump, this is MAGA country. Maybe Chicago is MAGA country if these numbers shake out. <laughs> so you're going to have to then, if Trump wins, uproot everything about Bidenomics. You're going to uproot the entire Green New Deal. And this is a full endorsement for the president to lock down the border. The media is <laughs> going to have to lie for Joe Biden to win, and they're going to have to lie much more than they did four years ago. The media is going to have to tell you that having $5 in your pocket is better than having $10. They're going to have to tell you that war is good. They're going to have to tell you the border is secure and crime is only a red state problem. And I don't even think they're going to be able to put... They're liars, but they're not that good of a liar, Dana. Now... Blacks, Hispanics, and young Americans. Why are you looking at me when you come <laughs> I'm looking at young Americans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looking at Kaylee. <laughs> so this is the Biden base that's collapsed. So three years of Joe Biden's policies, it's sunk in. Blacks, Hispanics, young Americans, it's over. You cannot win an election as a Democrat and tie the Republican with Hispanics. You cannot tie the Republican with young voters. You cannot have a Republican candidate win more than 20 percent of the black vote. I mean, you had to just shatters your entire coalition. And now everybody sees what we saw from the very beginning. This was a corrupt, detached man who's a D.C. dinosaur that has no clue what he's doing. And now you can't even afford to buy a house. So Obama world is coming in to try to save the day. And it's not just Axelrod. Eric Holder said the other day, you know, these judges really shouldn't be throwing Trump in prison on gag order violations. You're making this guy into a hero. Bezos, the second richest man in the world who runs the Washington Post, doesn't want to have anything to do with the second Biden term. The CIA is leaking that they don't want Joe back in the White House. There's a lot of powerful forces that are aligning to get this guy out of here. And now you're getting these push polls from ABC News, the New York Times. Not looking good. Kaylee, this is also the poll was before what looks to be more internal strife within the Democratic Party about President Biden's strong support for Israel. Yes. And that will also chip away because you even had people on his campaign apparently wanting to write a letter to the commander in chief telling him to back off of his support of Israel. Yes. Young people do not approve of his approach to Israel. Arab Americans, 17 17 percent approval rating for President Biden. So you're right. This is before all of right. that. Mm -hmm. If I am Joe Biden, I'm his campaign. And I'm looking at this poll. I dug through it today. Would Joe Biden be good for the country? When you add up the very good and somewhat good, guess what total you get? Eight percent. Eight percent think he would be good for the country. And then you look at President Trump. How would he handle issues vis-a-vis -vis Joe Biden? Who would be better off? 20 percent advantage on the economy, 9 percent advantage on national security, 9 percent advantage on Israel before you get to black voters. To your point, I never thought I'd read in The New York Times about Trump's support among black voters unseen in presidential politics for a Republican in modern times. That is the kind of support Trump's getting. Now, big caveat and star on this, you have to operationalize these numbers. That means in Pennsylvania, you have to learn how to combat 40 days of early voting. In Nevada, where he has an 11-point advantage, you have to learn to combat some of the laws they've codified, where mass mail-out voting is the law of the land. You have to bank votes in the way the Democrats do. Right now, it looks like this is how low can you go for Joe, mm -hmm. but 
You've got to operationalize this, Republicans. Greg Gutfeld, save the best for last. <laughs> Just want to say it's great to be back around Harold. Uh, you said, in some cases, Joe is down to single digits. And I think we know what single digit America is giving him. Uh, why, don't they, why don't they just tell him this is his second term? Do you think he'll know? But it, it, in all honesty, I mean, it's not, a, it's not age. It's ability and his actions. As predicted, if you wanted a second term from Trump, give the Dems a term in between. Because for A, you give the country a break from the media's TDS, which really didn't go away, and you let the Democrats drive the car into the ditch. Trump gave Joe a stable country and Joe set it on fire. And this is what happens when you choose nice words and no deeds over good deeds and mean words. Joe was supposed to smooth out all those frumpled lumps in our nation's fabric. This was a war for the soul of the nation. And what did we get? Yep. We got more division. We got more war. We got more crime, more inflation, more unfettered illegal immigration. So this is why with Trump, you need to always focus on the deeds and live your life. So how do you do that? So I had an epiphany, and I wrote oh. it down. I had this Saturday night. I was listening to this critic talk about the opportunity costs of Trump, his divisive personality. It takes your eye off the ball, and that's the reason we got this Hamas attack, which is interesting. And the critic says he admitted that Trump's policy on the Middle East was better and safer, mm -hmm. but it was his personality that was a problem. So this is the epiphany. Trump's not in office and they still obsess over him three years later. The opportunity cost actually grew greater <laughs> under Joe Biden, which means if you like Trump's policies but couldn't handle Trump's behavior, you should probably still vote for Trump anyway, because whether he wins or not, the derangement will persist. So you have a choice, Trump obsession, Biden policies, or Trump obsession and Trump policy. And by the way, you could replace Trump with any Republican because the obsession and the derangement will just take another shape or form. And if you want real opportunity costs, you think about what we were obsessed with under Biden. We were fixated on the Ukrainian border. We were fixated on, you, on identity politics and racism. And meanwhile, we were scared to death because our cities were crumbling and we were plagued by crime. We got all of that, all of that, plus Trump derangement, without the Trump policies. Think about that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump's not even president, and he's changing the behavior of Democrats. Suddenly, they start acting like adults, right? They, they, they realize they can't fight two wars. They realize that unfettered illegal immigration and a border collapse is not going to work for them, right? And you can't let felons run free. So in this weird way, Democrats are starting to act like adults because they're scared to death of a childish Trump. You had this epiphany on a Saturday night. Yeah, this is what I do now. <laughs> and you wrote it down. And I wrote it down. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.